Hey everyone, welcome to my next video. Today, as promised, we're gonna do timers on STM32. And this time it's gonna be a little bit different. I already have everything open and that's because for you I have created a template project. As promised, uh, if you follow my GitHub account, here I have all the code for all the videos, so all the make files and the main files. And from now on, I also have a template folder, which includes the main, the make file, and uh, the other flash system and system conf. So these files are because, if you remember in my previous video, I talked to you about some stuff I didn't uh, I actually had wrong. So in that case, the clock of the system was set up wrong because in the system file, which is this one, uh, was configured for 25 megahertz and I also investigated further that file had 30th September uh, mark and this one has 19th September and I just pulled this file off from an example sketch from the ST that it's provided. So this one should be right because it already says 8 megahertz input, the PLL main is 8 megahertz but we're gonna go talk about this uh, later. So. Here you have the template project uh, and what's important about this template is this is what you should have in your project folder because these files uh, are hard coded to your processor. The libraries which are provided for the ST are universal and you should use the ones that should apply to your project. Uh, the only thing that changes is really the restriction files. So this uh, conf, the system file for the input clocks, the linker file, and the core file you have, but already we have core 0, uh, 3, and 4, which are the main, and 7, which are the main cores for the project in the standard peripheral libraries included. So uh, that's why the template folder includes all these files, because these are dependent on your processor. So now let's go to the timer. So I already have the code, which is because I mentioned template, direct derivative from the template. Let's open the main.c from the template. I decided that this template should include that RCC setup, GPIO, USART and timer. That's because we need to assemble clocks, put up GPIO for, uh, for your LEDs and the button, and also put up USART so we can debug this on the poor man way through the terminal. So we have a USART enabled at a relatively slow baud rate and you should all be stationary unless you want to change this if you want to put more data through. And also a timer which we're going to talk about today. And why is this part of the template project? Well, we haven't talked about uh, timers before until today. But one thing that was missing was a delay function, a proper delay function that delayed for an accurate amount of time in milliseconds or microseconds. So today we're going to make a delay function and uh, talk about timers as well. So the today's project is basically a derivative of that with something in the main loop. So we're going to toggle all the LEDs and uh, send a number that is going to be increasing and a new line so in terminal if i pull it from my right window as you can see we have one second interval and this number is already at 522 and it's going to print the number and then high and the new line every one second because i'm using delayed millisecond so how to get this let's start with timers so Let's start with the thing that I got wrong. So the timer for the global w was set up wrong. How? Well, in the system file, which I can pull up right now. So let's go to our atom. So I have also, uh, always the peripheral simsys and the project folder opened. So if you open the system file and let's give it more space. So this file includes all the settings for the clocks as well. So the system clock that is expected and then the prescalers and the input frequency. So what are these? So let's go to the, the reference manual and this is called the clock tree. So this is showing how the clocks are distributed in the microcontroller. So this is our input point. 
Where is it? Okay. So here you would put in an oscillator. Uh, between these two pins, you would put a crystal and two ceramic capacitor, or just in the input, you can plug in an external oscillator that already produces a clock signal. And in our case, this is an 8 megahertz crystal or an oscillator, depending on your board. So this 8 megahertz, which is in the range from 4 to 26 megahertz, comes in as HIC, so external clock oscillator. We also have an internal one, and that's called the HSI. So this HSE, so if you find HSE referred to anywhere else, you know what it is, enters here and goes into this max and into the M. So what is this M? Well, if you go back to this one, there's the PLL M. So this is the first divider and it's also so conveniently labeled as slash M. Let's go closer. Slash M. So this is going to divide by the master. You could call it like that. So if you have an 8 megahertz crystal and this HSC is going to be 8 megahertz, then we need to divide it by 8. So we get a clean 1 megahertz that we can manipulate to any frequency. If you think about it, 1 megahertz is easier to multiply by any number to get any frequency than 8. And also this max also includes the HSI, which is over here, the in internal 16 megahertz one. This is what it is. It's a, a symbol for max. So this is a, just a selector. So this 8 megahertz goes into here, and this is a PLL. And this is also a great representation of how PLL works. Um, it's a little more complicated, but in short, uh, the signal comes into the voltage-controlled oscillator which multiplies it by a factor of n. So this 8 megahertz comes inside, and this is going to compare it to the output. And we do that, so we compare the input to this input, that we take the output and divide it by, and multiply it by some value, and compare it. So the VCO will increase the output frequency depending on the input. So it's just like a comparator and multiplier. So that's going to uh, spew out a... Uh, frequency which is going to be this coming from n multiplied by n. So we conveniently see the PLL n. So this is the first multiplier. So whopping 336 megahertz is at this point over here. And then it's going to go into, yes, more dividers, P, Q, and R dividers. And P divider is the PLL clock, which is the main system clock. The Q is going to go to the in this case, 48 megahertz peripherals, and R is not used in this case. So the P is the main one. So if you go lower, there's the P. The P is going to divide it by 2. So this frequency, the N, is not arbitrarily used just 336 from random, is because if you divide it by 2, we get the system clock 168 megahertz. And this is also the H clock and the system clock. We know this because we can follow the P, and PLL clock, and this can be the software for the system clock. So this is another max that can select between internal clocks, so this whole system can run either slowly 16 megahertz on HSC clock or the multiplied clock from the PLL. And as you can see, this is the AHB, so this is the peripheral register. So this one is the fast one because it runs on 168 megahertz. So this is going to go to the DMA, memory, and all the peripherals, including the core, which is here. So this is basically the system clock. And then another derivative is going to the APBs. And these APBs are the peripheral-based uh, controllers, and we have met the APB1 and 2. If we go to our code, to the main, we have APB1 and APB2. So this uh, APB2 in this case is the USART and others like it, like SPI, or SPI might be in AHB1. But in our case, the timers are in APB1, at least the timer we're going to use today. So APB1 and 2 are here, and it's going to have own prescaler. So remember, the 168 coming in here, and it's going to get divided. So if you go back to our system file, we see the also the Q1. And then the PLL one I squared S we have not enabled. And over here we have AHB prescaler. So these are prescalers for the AHB clock, the APB1, APB2. Sweet. So this is telling us the APB1 and APB2 is going to be get divided by 4 and 2. 
And if we go back, the AHB is not going to divide by anything. So this is the prescaler. So this is this one. So it's going to uh, stay 168. And then 168 goes in here. And for APB1, so this is the APB peripheral, it's going to get divided by 4. And if you divide 168 by 4, you get 42 meg. And for APB2 divided by 2, you get 84 megahertz. So this is just like we discussed before. And this is important. We need to know exact clocks of the peripherals. And that uh, this way the clocks manages to the system, core, and our peripherals. So that's where the timers come in. So we, I have here, let's expand this. Come on. Oh, right. So let's expand. This is the .c files and .h files. So I have the timer open up as well. And basically a timer gets a pulse from its input, which is in this case on which port it is. In our case, we have timer free here defined and it's on APB1. And as we saw, APB1, it has the prescaler 4, so it's the 42 megahertz one. So we know we're going to get into the timer the 42 megahertz. But what then? Well, the timer sees a big block. So let's go down to the general purpose timers, which is here, the timer 2 to 5. And these are the general timers that you will use for nothing special. They only have a 16-bit prescaler and 16-bit uh, register uh, recorder, so IRR. And you have others. So... Uh, that have 32 bits, like timers 2 and 5 have 32 bit prescalers and auto reload counters. So, if there's a sketch, this is a sketch of a timer. So, we start, where do we start? We start over here. So, this is the internal clock from the RCC. So, this is the clock that gets to our timer. And then this clock can be either an external. This one internal, so this is the 42 megahertz, the one the timer is in quote marks plugged onto, or some other interrupts. And this is another trigger controller, so we're going to select the internal clock. So this is the clock coming from the internal source, that 42 megahertz one. That 42 megahertz is going to go here, if you follow my mouse, into the prescaler. What a prescaler is, is a fancy term for a divider. It's going to divide that input frequency by some factor. And then we have a counter. So this is the auto reload register. This register is going to tell the counter to where to count until to overflow. So the counter, the auto reload register are 16 bit in this case for our timer three and four. And it's going to count only to two to the power of 16. And that's 65,000 roughly. And that's not enough if you want one hertz pulse, for example. So that way we have a prescaler that divides our clock on the input before it goes into the counter. So we can divide this to the two to the power of 16. And then we can count to any value we want from zero to two to the power of 16. And why do we use the prescaler? And why do you want to avoid using only prescaler? Well, because uh, unlike Arduino, these timers on STM platform have very uh, lot of functionality, including multiple channels. We have channel one, two, three, and four. And each channel can do something depending on what state the counter is in. And if we divide the prescaler clock, which is the input code by very low value, and we want to trigger different Re, uh, output on this timer like 1, 2, and 3, and 4, we would have very inconvenient clock. But if you keep this input clock uh, divider as low as possible, so the frequency going to the counter is as fast as possible, we have a wider range that this input and output uh, channels can operate at. So uh, only use the input prescaler when the counter, the maximum division that you want to do on any of these channels. So if you want to count to, I don't know, 65,000, which is the maximum, and one of these output compare register, we want to trigger at that value, then it's not enough if we have a high prescaler and low counter, because this one is never going to get to 65,000. So you have to come uh, com uh, combine with this too. So if you just want to select an output frequency of, say, 1 hertz. Well, how can you do it? Well, 
we can take the input 42 megahertz divided by let's say 42 so we get 1 megahertz and then divided by a million oh wait a million is over 65,000. so we have to divide by let's say 42,000. this is in the range from 0 to 65,000. so we divide the clock by 42,000. so we get a frequency that is 1000 hertz over here uh, and then uh, so 42 is gets 1 megahertz and then 1000 gets us uh, 1000 hertz and then we count to 1000 and that way we have an output pulse on overflow at 1 hertz so this is one way or you can combine these two in uh, different so you can divide by 1000 and count to 42000 for example so you have combined these two depending on your uh, use of the compare register but if you don't care you can just use any way you want and also there's a trick these are computers these also count with zero so when you say a prescaler of zero that means it's gonna divide by nothing or dividing by one because if you divide by one the number on the output is the same as on the input and if the prescaler is one that's actually a two so it's gonna divide by two. Why is that? Well, if the prescaler is basically just a counter and it's gonna count to one, it's gonna go zero, one, zero, one. So it's the frequency of the overflow of this small counter is gonna be uh, half of the input frequency because input frequency is gonna be zero, one. So every number you change, there's another pulse on the input and the output frequency of this overflow is two hertz. So that way you have to remember this in the calculations. And if I can find it fast enough, there is a calculation in here that shows you uh, this formula, exact formula. So the output frequency is the input divided by the prescaler that you have selected plus one. So if you have a prescaler uh, on the number of one, then your number is two and the counter number plus one as well because counter is also gonna count zero as well so the, the overall equation uh, has these two numbers and each of these numbers you have to add one before dividing the input clock by this so the output frequency changes this way so if i'm gonna find that uh, line of code i saw before in here i'm gonna go to there but let's go to the code right now and let's see what I've done in the code. So the first thing first, you enable the clock to the peripheral, just find it in the timer library over here and you find the timer free is in APB1. Also, let's create another function, a setup function, which is gonna be timer free setup and let's go through it. In GPIO, we don't need for now anything special. So let's go to the timer free setup so we have another structure and then it has a few parameters so the first one is the prescaler this is the one that he have talked about so in my case this prescaler is zero because we want to divide by nothing and then the clock division this is the division factor is going to stay uh, the default value that is provided and we're going to count up you can for purposes of counting we're going to go up so we uh, Incre increment the timer but you can also uh, decrease the timer as well the repetition counter is another peripheral that can be also divided by but we don't use it the repetition counter is another part of the peripheral and the, uh, the, the peripheral counter is not going to be used right now so we're just going to use the period and this period if we just follow the rabbit and the period is going to be part of the ARR register, which is the auto reload value. So this is exactly this register that's going to hold this certain value to which the counter will count. And when it counts to this value, it overflows and resets the counter. So this is the auto reload exactly, but it says period over here. So 42 megahertz should come here. And this is one thing I don't understand. So I don't understand everything because the APB1 should be 42 megahertz. And we will check this uh, right uh, after this, uh, if that is true. So if that input clock is 42 megahertz, we need to count to 42. If we count to 42, 
uh, or sorry, 41, we get 42 pulses in the input. So the output clock is getting divided by 42. As I said, the input clock divided by the prescaler or the period over here plus one. So if you want to divide 42 megahertz by 42 to get one megahertz, we need to divide it by 41 because that one is also included in the zero. But in this case, if I divide by 83, we get one megahertz on the output because the timer that I showed you before here, you can see that it's one second pulses. If I change this to 41, it's going to be half a second pulses. So I don't know why, because APB1 should be 42 megahertz and APB2 should be 84 megahertz. So if I find why this is that, I'm going to comment down in the comments or maybe i put a, uh, something over the video uh, if I found out why is this so. But nevertheless, uh, around this hurdle, let's just create, uh, initialize this setting. And then we want to use an interrupt. We have already met interrupts and we're going to use interrupts so that when this timer overflows and let's see what this update means. But the theory is when the timer overflows, so when one megahertz output, uh, this is the one megahertz outputs on the overflow. When that happens, we want to trigger an interrupt for the processor and that interrupt is going to increment a certain timer or a start a delay function. So that's what we want to do. So we start an interrupt for timer three on which event. So let's go to the dot C and search for it. Let's expand this. So the update is the update source. And the update is the one that happens on the reload end. We can go down to the generate event, get flag status, on update flag. This is also the same one. So the update is when the uh, the re register overflows. So this is why we use the update. But you can use any other. So you can use on uh, capture control, uh, compare registers one, two, three, and four or interrupt source or external trigger or anything like that. But we're going to use update. So on every update, the we enable the um, interrupt and then we need an interrupt routine as well. So when the interrupt happens, this function, the timer free RQ handler is going to be called. So we need the definition of this, con uh, this function. So firstly, we check if it was because of the update. So we can suggest as well in here. So if an update was the trigger for this interrupt, then yes, this is R. Let's clear the flag and increment a global tick counter that I have created. And if you go to the beginning of the code, here is the global variable, the global ticks. And I, uh, this ticks is going to be used for millis. Oh, no, it's going to be microseconds, as I said, well, here's another change. And uh, we have divided the clock by, this should be 42 megahertz. So this is going to timer going to pulse at one megahertz or one microsecond periods. So we can use that to create two function. One is going to be delay microseconds and delay mi milliseconds. If you just want milliseconds, then divide as well uh, by a thousand over here because you can't add just three because the period is to the to power of 16. So if you want just milliseconds, then add 999 because dividing by thousand includes the zero. So we have two functions. So uh, these two functions, when they get called, they start the timer only then. So the timer is going to be stationary. You can observe here that with Usart, we have a usart command, so the usart start. But here we don't use the command function because we don't want to start the timer. This is another global millis timer that you can also create. It's, it's the same, but when you start it, then a global variable will be increased. So that's why maybe we can do this as well. So we, maybe on the RQ handler, we can also increment a certain timer. So it's like a millis function in Arduino. So when a delay millisecond or microsecond function gets called, we start the timer and then reset the global ticks because this is where the interrupt routine will be dumping the counts, so to say. And then we wait until this tick is a number is less than 
the number that we desired. So in case of milliseconds, because our counter is working in microseconds, we want to multiply it by 1000. So this is basically saying uh, when this number reaches this number, then uh, exit out of the while loop. Not just here for the, uh, so the compiler doesn't ignore it. Maybe I'll uh, uh, research upon this later. So we wait for this milliseconds in an empty loop and then disable the timer so the timer isn't running uh, anyway. So and then get back into here. And so in here we have a small while routine. So we're gonna toggle all the LEDs, send a number. This is just a global variable and it's gonna be incremented. And then send letters high and new line and delay for 1000 milliseconds in this case. So let's test it for microseconds as well. If you put in 1 million, this is going to be, oops, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. So this is 1 second. And also make sure, well, you already have this from the template. You already have the timer in here. Make sure your user is correct. And if that's so, that's, I'm going to pull out my Terminal, so let's compile and burn it. And let's set reset on my board because usually it doesn't work. So you have to manually reset it. And here's the putty window. So you see it's one second pulses. Let's go back to millisecond and let's say high hundred milliseconds. So let's burn it. And let's reset it. You can see it's faster. Tick tock, tick tock. So it's uh, uh, pulsing at half a second. And uh, I don't have a camera today again, but uh, on my board, the LEDs are uh, flashing with a period of one second because it toggles. And after half a second, it toggles low again. So it pulses. Uh, at a period of one second, so this is a one second period. But if you leave this at one millisecond, one second, then it's gonna be on for one second and off for one second. And now it's gonna be on for half a second and on and off for half a second. So this is pulsing at a period of one second on my board right now. So this is one way to create a, a nice clock. But here I have something else. I have an RCC definition. We haven't touched RCC library more than just the definitions of the peripheral clocks. Well, there's a good reason. I promised you before, I said we'll later check the frequency of our port. And there's also a function inside of here. So the RCC library that sets the PLLs and everything else can also check the, uh, the internal clocks. And that's by this structure. So if we follow this structure, there's also a neat little function called RCC get clock frequencies. And this gets all the frequencies, which can be, where are they all? Oh, maybe they're here. Yeah. So the clock type def have this clock. So the system clock, the H clock, which is, if you remember, is the H clock is the RCC, the clocks. Yes. So the H clock is this main one. So uh, the main one is the H clock, and then it's gonna be the APB one and APB two, and the system clock. H clock is in the one before. So if you go back, so we have these clocks, and we can check the frequency of these that are set. So uh, if we set this function in this structure, there should be these values inside. So let's, uh, for the sake of this, like, let's leave this here and then just print all of this. So we're going to print a number and then let's put a tab after it. Three, four. Let's do it like this. And this is going to be the RCC dot one of these. So this is how you address a structure. So we're going to get this item from this structure. And then let's put a tab. And in the end, we're going to have a new line. Let's just change this. 
and then we're gonna also use dot h clock frequency so this is gonna spew out the frequencies let's put it over here and then pcl1 and dot 2 so this is gonna print this what we already have and then all these clocks that are set and a new line so let's upload it party and here we go this is come on this is what we expected so if i just let me just plug it out of the power it's annoying so here we have the H clock and the system clock or vice versa and it's 168 we can assure three zeros one two three zero so it's 168 megahertz and then the APB1 is 42 megahertz and the APB2 is 84 so uh, again I'm not sure why this works this should in theory work as well so I don't know why I have to divide by something to reach as I was working with APB2, but I'm working with APB1. So I don't know everything. So if I find a solution, I'll post you. So this is, this is how I found out that my clock settings over here were wrong because I ran this code and I got all sorts of weird codes. And as I recalled in the previous video, um, it also affected SPI. We did all those videos with this system file being wrong on every one. But why did it work? Well, it worked because the clock setting here was 25 megahertz. So divider was 25. So the whole system was working at a very lower frequency than it should be. And uh, that's, why, that's why the prescaler for the SPI peripheral was left alone at the maximum. So the uh, fastest speed because the peripheral was working well. But now that the system was working faster, then the peripheral couldn't handle the low prescaler and we had to divide it by 8 or 16. So that's another thing. If you haven't seen it, please go watch the previous video to address this problem. And now your clock should be fine. And use this tool if you don't know if your clocks are correct to check on your clocks as well. So... This should be all for the timers. Um, I'm going to do another because it's already, well, 33 minutes. And I'm going to do another video on how to use timers to actually do something like blink uh, or something else. We have already saw that on the timers. Let's go back to the, our timers. We have capture compare register with, so these are four channels. And these registers can act on a certain value of the counter so when the counter reaches a certain value this register is gonna do something either it's gonna out uh, trigger an output or an interrupt or a dma what have you uh, also uh, i'm gonna show you one more thing uh, which is how to create a global clock without these timers and it's gonna use the internal function called uh, from the system but that's gonna be for another video and gonna prepare that uh, folder for you to the next time so see you on the next time thanks for watching